Ew. A dinner is served, a madam. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. All right, y'all, just what I'm craving today is some easy peasy bacon, mac, and cheesy. Got it all here, the Scooby-Doo noodles, all these different cheeses. And then, of course, some crispy wangs. We're going to have maybe buffalo and honey mustard. Let's get into it. All right, fresh, clean, like two pounds of wings here. We're going to submerge these into buttermilk. Just like so, let those set up for a little bit. All right, got to boil up a personal size, a little bit of nudes here. Uh oh, okay. Easy guys. Go ahead and let these guys go for about 10 minutes. All right, real simple crispy coating for the wings. We're just going with corn starch. And we've also got some baking powder as well. Time to crisp up some bacon the easy way in the deep fryer. I do love this method. It's no hassle, no grease, no nothing. You just fry it and it's real easy clean up. My favorite way. Nudes are all done. Let them live in this bowl until we build our sauce to toss them in. Check on our bacon. Should be good. Been a couple minutes. I think we're right where we need to be pretty much. All right, coming in hot. Bacon is looking nice, good, solid. We want it nice and crispy for breaking up into the mac and cheese. Flame on, nice and low. Go ahead and build the base of this sauce. We need to get a roux going. So we get that on real nice and low. We get about a tablespoon or so tablespoon and a half two tablespoon or so of butter slowly melting equal parts all-purpose flour all right our roux is nice and blonde we're going to go in with our milk now all right i got all this excess cheese laying around from the grilled cheese video so we're going to go in with some mozzarella slices we're going to go in with some old cheddar as well right here couple slices of old cheddar for some sharp flavor lots of cheese to use up here today also never had goat cheese in a mac and cheese but I got to use it up so that's going in as well and lastly a nice dollop of craft cheese whiz why not start to bring this together all right we're gonna pull this off and just let it set up for a bit all right, let's make a quick, uh, maybe like a mild sauce for these wings. I don't love super spicy buffalo wings, so I just like to make my own little mild sauce. We're gonna cook it right in this bowl here, because why not? It'll just take a minute or two to make, so it's no big deal. Things are getting crazy though already here. But nice and low heat. Butter into the bowl while that's going crazy. We come in with Frank's Red Hot. Dumb it down with some ketchup. Sweet Baby Ray's. Craft barbecue and chicken and rib. A dash of our secret ingredient is pepperoncini liquid. And we whip. Go ahead and work that butter in. Make sure the butter melts into the sauce. And that's my style of like a, a delicious kind of buffalo wing, but I just like it a little dumbed down. I don't like it too hot. And I'm also craving honey mustard today. This is just a store-bought one that I wanted to try just to see because I kind of want to take notes of it and try to figure out how to make this style of honey mustard a non-mayo based one with you know homemade stuff but I kind of want to just get an understanding of really what's going on in this so I think this one is a good one and we clearly know it wouldn't be wings without our best boy the valley the hidden the ranch we gotta have some ranch on these all right, and one of our final little prep tasks is I'm gonna bake a little crispy top on top of this mac when I plate it up. So we're gonna go panko into here and we're just gonna prep it with some oil so that it doesn't burn when we're kind of baking it off in the oven. So it'll just help crisp it, help it not to burn, but just toss it and try to make it a little less dry. And oops, I almost forgot we need our classic quintessential palate cleanser of celery. The nice light green one. And you guys know by now that I'm going matchstick. Discard that. Half. And then we go matchstick. As much as we can. Uniform. Almost matchstick. Kind of julienne, but not, you know? Thin. Just thin. Nice and thin is how we like them. 
I gotta take a second just to tell you guys something. This is the closest I come to to happiness in life. <laughs> is when the prep vibes are immaculate. When it's almost ready to throw together, but everything has its place. Everybody's in the right zone. And we just have to assemble. Now the dishes after, on the other hand, not so great. Although I do use them as Zen time with the hot water and a podcast to really vibe out. But this right here is where I find deep satisfaction and fulfillment is this. The organization is, yeah, that's it for me. <laughs> time to dredge up these wings. We got a flat going in. We got a drum going in. I'm going to do maybe about six at a time in here. We don't want to overcrowd. And we'll do them in little batches here. And we just pack them in a little bit here. A nice light packing. All right, y'all, we got the oil up at 340. And I'm gonna go, I think, maybe six wings at a time. Don't overcrowd. Just a little basket I got here. Seven or eight minutes in, this is what we're looking like. We got some nice golden crispy wings. Let's go ahead and salt these up and let them have a little moment of chill. All right, our crispy wings into the bowl. We're gonna do another batch, but we're gonna salt these right now while they're hot. And we're just gonna hit them with some salt. A light little toss. Do up another batch and let those kind of come down to temp. I like my wings to come down to kind of room temp before I eat them. While those wings are relaxing, we got our perfect personal portion of mac and cheese. So we got the sauce back at like, uh, you know, kind of hot, not too, too hot, but we're gonna drench this in it. Crumble in our bacon, like I said. that crumbly deep fried bacon and then we're gonna mix that up I want this to be super creamy and wet bring in the personal portion dish and go ahead and get that situated into the personal portion dish just like so pack it in pack it in like a glove the perfect fit Get all that extra on there. Smooth out this top a little bit. Just try to get it like kind of flat. And I'm gonna place on a piece of mozzarella. Spoon on this crispy panko top. And we're gonna bake this at 350 until I think it's ready to go basically. Just, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Okay, coming in hot, 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 straight out the oven. Here she is, a couple minutes in there for a nice golden top. Let's go ahead and sauce up these wings. All right, just did a quick little reheat on this sauce here and we'll toss these wings into the pool. And we toss. That's it right there, my friends, extra saucy. All right, meet me in the eating studio. Let's do this. All right, y'all, this is it. The inaugural uh, first real cooking episode in the new backdrop stew type area. Gang's all here. It's a filthy, dirty, delicious looking meal. A uh, little bit of different color selection today. I'm trying to mess with color tones and things. My last one didn't come out amazing, but that's neither here nor there. We need to have these naked wings, these saucy wings, this mac and cheese, these sauces, these cold celeries and uh, we got a uh, a friend here that we haven't seen in a while named dr peasy and i feel like i haven't cracked a cold uh diet soda in a minute so we'll move back the mac bring in our ice cup and do it old school before we do anything more we must pa -pa 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 pour so crack that Nice, slow, cold pour up. And yeah, this was just on my Crave, more or less. It's an amazing Crave. I'm sure many of you will enjoy this Crave. It's a down, dirty, pub-style meal, basically. Chef at my expertise. These wings came out pretty dope, but they're a little thicker and crumblier than I had kind of imagined. So I'm always testing wings. I'm always like seeing what works I, there's like I, i've cooked wings like 
honestly, at this point, I feel like 15 or 20 different ways. And I'm always just searching for the magical touch. So I know what is the magical touch. The old DP double penetration to my windpipe pepper doctor. Put it in me. I said that double penetration to my windpipe. It's whatever. You take it where your mind wants to take it, okay? Right? Okay? All right. Let's get in. I think the first thing we got to do is make sure I don't knock these sauces over. But while this mac is hot, I want to spoon in for a bite to see if we can get a little matzo pole there. All right. Moment of truth. Trying not to spill it everywhere. But do we get a little matzo pull from that, from that matzo top that I put on there? No, we don't. We just get a nice, super creamy bite of mac and cheese. Bite for you first. And then, of course, I'm going to have to do my own honors. Wow. More of a white ch uh, white cheese sauce, mac and cheese, not the classic classic color. Still delicious nonetheless. Lots of different cheeses in here. And I gotta tell you, the goat cheese. star of the show didn't know how it would affect how it would be but I'm telling you goat cheese has that sharpness to it that uh, strange tang, if you will. And in a mac and cheese, it works. Phenomenally. So we're feeling it. And I gotta tell you that bacon, it's just peeking through, peekaboo. choking me it's just subtly there just playing knock knock ginger on my palate you know it's like I, I hear you but like when I come to the door you're I could just see you running off into the bush that's what this bacon's doing A little knock knock ginger on the old palito. I think the natural progression is to go with one of these wings. Next, let's look at how easy they come apart. Watch this one. And we're just pulling. And it's simple. It's a ranch. And it's so clean. Mm. So tendy. No effort required. Clean, beautiful bones. So sad easy. Mm. 
no effort required. That's why I love the cornstarch methodology. Always ensures a tender wing fall off the bee. Tender. Ooh, we're getting hot. I'm in a small room with hot food. We're heating up. I think that calls for celery. Quick matchstick cleanser. From your shaky boy. Is it anxiety? Is it low blood sugar? Is it MS? <laughs> Is it alcohol issues? Is it I partied hard in my 20s and now my nervous system shot? I don't know. What it is though? An annoying question in the comments. <laughs> I understand. Curiosity strikes, but after years of it and me not having died yet, I'm just like, I can't tell you. I don't, I don't, I don't know why I shake the way I shake. I can tell you though that I'm very excited for this honey mustard bite. Oh yeah. That is certainly what is up. Very much like um, the school cafeteria honey mustard. The not, uh, not mayo base. You could tell it's just honey mustard, other flavorings, and I'm assuming a cornstarch like slurry. To give it that gelatinous nature. And perhaps some yellow food coloring. Would be my guess. There's definitely some like factory um, produced like almost chemically substances though that they put in these sauces that I could never recreate. So that's the hardest part of whatever trying to make a sauce like this is like you just don't have access to the scientific pseudo flavors that end up in these sauces. You can get close, but it'll never be the same. And why is that? That brands and companies and things always have those secret flavors that just, they make you like, I gotta buy it. I gotta buy it. I can't recreate it. But now that we have these initial bites settled, I gotta talk about uh, this Netflix special that Bo Burnham just put out inside. If you haven't watched it, watch it. It's goddamn genius. It's incredible. His level of talent in so many arenas is just jaw-dropping. 
To think that he composes all the musical arrangements, writes the songs, records the songs, engineers the songs. And how goddamn witty all of them are. His ability to weave in social commentary and comedy and like wordplay and punnery. Just masterful. On top of that, his knowledge of <clears throat> cameras and lighting and angles and stitching together, like the video editing himself. all from one room makes me feel so creatively inept. Like I just feel destroyed after I watched that. I was like, well, I'll never make anything an eighth as good as what this guy just did. Just insane. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Standing ovation for me. I was actually asked, just blown away by it. I couldn't even critique a single bad thing about it. Crazy. I've known about him since his very, like, Genesis on YouTube. Like, I've known about Bo for show. Like, in his room, I've known about those videos ever since they went on YouTube. Even then, it was very apparent that he was super talented in going places. Over the years, I didn't necessarily remain, like, a massive fan. I didn't, like, really follow his his work or career, but I did, like kind of watch clips and snippets and I think one of his specials along the way and always being impressed but never a super fan never like you know really watching looking out for him I actually served him. I was his server in Toronto. There's a TIFF festival, and it happens on King Street, and that's where the restaurant that I worked at was. And he came in with this, he's like 6'5", or 4", he's tall, super gangly, and he came in with this girl who was literally like up to his, basically she could blow him standing up is what I'm saying. And the, the height differential was hilarious. And they sat at a, at a two-top, at a deuce, and our tables there were pretty low so he was sitting there and he looked like he was in a clown car because like his knees were at the level of the table while she was like you know just looked like a normal human being sitting at a table and then <laughs> I served them they just got cocktails and I didn't I was like I know who this is probably not going to say anything but I kind of like was so in my head about thinking about who he was that when I took like the cocktail order, I, I just spaced, like I just kind of spaced. And then I went to put it in. I'm like, I don't even know what he wants. Like I, I don't even, <laughs> cause I was like so distracted by thinking about him and his work and just whatever. And, uh, I like screwed up his drink order <laughs> or whatever, but he was chill about it. it was an easy fix. But anyways, you know, never some like diehard fan, but after this special, I'm just converted into like, this man's a genius. Like, absolutely. And I will definitely 
consume the next thing that he puts out without question. So if you haven't seen it, it's a work of art. If it doesn't blow you away, like this wing, I would be surprised. I shouldn't be surprised. It's people like that, though, that make you go, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I ain't never going to be shit. How are you that good? <laughs> right? How are you that good? And the reason I say that good is because how are you that well-rounded how are you that proficient in so many things to the level of expert in an arena like an array of things most people really good at one or two things tops guy's just an animal all right i'm so hot i'm full enough it was enjoyable i think i have to say that in these now like this shit about this isn't about me finishing a shit ton of food because i don't like to destroy myself like that it's just about me making crafting together a really delicious dope meal and then just enjoying as much of it as i as makes me happy <laughs> I don't want to sit here and crush like a trillion fucking foods, you know? So, I hope you enjoyed it. Give, you know, renditions and recipes and ideas a go at home. Also, check out that special. So damn good. Till the next one, you know, do eat good, live well. Stay true.